Hello anatomy friends, this is Dr. Alsup, and in this video we will be discussing how we can locate and identify the muscles of mastication, because you can't have a session on mastication without talking about these muscles. So we're going to start out with one of the big ones, the masseter muscle, sometimes pronounced masseter muscle. I go with the masseter, and it is this large muscle right in this region here. So that is your masseter muscle. It is a dominant muscle on the superficial side of the ramus of the mandible, sometimes referred to as the most superficial muscle of mastication. In fact, we're looking right now in this particular view at the superficial part of the muscle. It is a very large muscle, a very thick muscle, so there's all kinds of different fibers going in different directions associated with the masseter. This muscle is often described as quadrangular and will have superior attachments or proximal attachments to the inferior margin of the zygomatic bone, which would be over here, as well as the zygomatic arch, which you can see a little bit of right here. Uh, and you even have some attachments all the way onto the maxillary bones if we continued on and if we kind of pulled up some of these muscles in this region. Its distal or inferior attachments will, of course, be on the mandible, as will all the muscles of mastication. And so it's going to spread out in many different parts of the mandible in terms of its distal attachments. So the lateral body, uh, the entirety of the superficial ramus, and into the angle of the mandible. So I think the masseter muscle is typically one of those easier to locate muscles associated with the head and neck. Moving to the temporalis region, which will be up here, we're looking kind of at an inferior lateral view. Uh, in order to see the temporalis muscle, or at least see it well, you have to remove the temporal fascia, which is what is occurring right here. So we're pulling up the temporal fascia in order to see the deep temporalis muscle. You can see a little bit of the tendon here. So this is the temporalis muscle, and this will be the temp temporal fascia. This fascia is an investing fascia and is particularly dense for an investing fascia. The temporal fascia is not to be confused with the temporoparietal fascia, which is more superficial at the same level with the SMAS. Superficial, in fact, to the temporal branches of the facial nerve, so the temporal parietal fascia has been removed in this dissection. So I can see a little bit of the muscle fibers deep to the fascia, so you know you're looking at an investing fascia, and specifically the investing fascia of the temporalis muscle, which is called the temporal fascia. So you pull that up, and then you would look at a dissection with the temporal fascia being removed. And that's what we're looking at here. We're looking directly at the muscle fibers and the tendons of the temporalis muscle. It's a pretty wide uh, expanse, specific, especially in comparison to a lot of the other muscles of mastication. This muscle will extend from the temporal fossa, which is up in this region, superiorly, to the coronoid process, which you can see kind of right here, and portions of the ramus, as well as the temporal crest of the mandible. This muscle is always much thicker than I remember in a dissection, so it's often pretty difficult to do a clean reflection without affecting the deeper pterygoid muscles and in that important neurovasculature. So another pretty thick muscle of mastication. So let's do move to those deeper muscles of mastication, starting with the lateral pterygoid muscle. This muscle has two heads, and we have two different images here because I think uh, they show different views kind of of these two heads. The superior head, which I'm going to label here and here. So that's going to be the superior heads on both of these dissections. The superior head's proximal attachment is way over in the sphenoid bone region. So at the greater wing of the sphenoid, which you can't see very well here, but you can see the attachment towards the articular disc as well as the capsule of the TMJ. So that one, of course, is going to be more superior. Whereas the inferior head, which I'm going to label here and here, the inferior head's proximal attachment 
is also on the sphenoid bone. So again, not uh, clearly visible in this image, but it's going to be on the lateral aspect of the lateral pterygoid plate of the sphenoid. And its distal attachment is going to be on that pterygoid fovea. And I think you can kind of see pretty nicely where that would be located there. The pterygoid fovea of the mandible, which is in the neck region of the condylar process. It is often closely associated with the second part of the maxillary artery, which you can see pretty clearly right here. And occasionally that second part of the maxillary artery will pass deep to the inferior head of the lateral pterygoid, which is what is occurring in this particular donor. Moving to the medial pterygoid muscle with the same images. This muscle forms the deep portion of the pterygomasseteric sling. So it's that sling um, that is going to be formed on either side of the ramus of the mandible. The masseter will be on the superficial part. The medial pterygoid will be on the deep part of the ramus of the mandible. And so that's what's forming that sling. I'm going to label them right here. It's a little difficult to see the medial pterygoid, mainly because, and let me label it right here, because you have a lot of that neurovasculature in these types of dissections, particularly the inferior alveolar neurovasculature, that's going to be kind of covering the medial pterygoid in these dissections. But just think if you had something on the other side of the ramus of the mandible, kind of mirroring the masseter muscle, that's going to be the medial pterygoid. Its proximal attachments are going to be all the way on the maxillary bone, the palatine bone, and it's going to be on the other side or the medial surface of the lateral pterygoid plate of the sphenoid. So the lateral pterygoid was on the lateral surface of the lateral pterygoid plate. The medial pterygoid will be on the medial surface of the lateral pterygoid plate. And then of course it will have its uh, distal attachment on the ramus of the mandible. So if I were to pick up these uh, this neurovasculature, you would be looking directly at the medial pterygoid. Same thing here, but you can see a little bit of it kind of peeking out in certain spots. All right, the last muscle I want to cover is not actually a muscle of mastication, but considered a muscle of facial expression, but in very close proximity to the muscles of mastication, and this is the buccinator muscle. Recall that the buccinator muscle is on a deeper plane than many of the other muscles of facial expression and it is covered superficially by a buccal fat pad. In most people, it's going to be variably shaped, irregularly shaped, and you can see it really nestled here, this buccal fat pad nestled here, uh, right in front of or anterior to the masseter muscle. But if you remove the fat pad, then you are looking at the buccinator muscle. I'm gonna label this here. And I love this particular image here. I think it's a good image of the buccinator muscle. This muscle covers the area superficial to the lateral teeth bearing regions of the maxilla and the mandible and will be anterior to the ramus of the mandible. So you can see that really nicely right here. So if you think about if you unreflected or move the masseter muscle back in place, you would have the masseter muscle sitting right here and then the buccinator kind of right anterior to it. You can even see a little bit of the remnants of the parotid duct in these images. Because if you recall from that session, the parotid duct is going to pierce the buccinator before emptying its contents into the oral cavity. So there is that buccinator. These are the muscles we wanted you to locate for this session. So four muscles of mastication and one muscle of facial expression, which is geographically closely related. Please make sure to review on your own and reach out with any questions you may have. Thank you and have a wonderful day.